Hi, y'all. Did you catch that rhetorical masterpiece in the DNC convention that was the Muslim mom and dad talking about their son who gave their, his life uh, protecting American soldiers when he served in our military? Brilliant piece of uh, theater there. So the father points out that if there was a policy, uh, if Trump got his way, if there were a policy of uh, ban all the Muslims, and this policy existed in the past, it would have kept out of this country him and his wife, which in turn would have kept out their son, which in turn would have prevented him from getting in our military, which in turn would have prevented him from going off to war and bravely giving his life, protecting the lives of some of our soldiers. Completely true. Of course, if that policy existed in the past, it would have kept out the 19 hijackers, which means that September 11th wouldn't have happened, which means that we wouldn't have deployed armies to both Afghanistan and Iraq, which means that our troops would not have been there in harm's way for anyone to need to be brave to save the lives of some of our soldiers from a roadside bomb or any other any, anything else there. So anybody can trace this back by saying if this policy existed and we did this in the past, it would have stopped this one event. The difficulty with the, the Democrat side is that they fail to apply the same reasoning, the, the, the same stop in the chain of events across the board. They want to pretend that the only thing that would have been stopped would have been the, the heroic part, the brave part, the good part. It would have stopped some of the bad and some of the good. Now, what the Democrats should argue is that the bravery of that one Muslim guy or, and others like him in our military, giving his life to save our soldiers, is well worth the cost of letting 3,000 people, 3,000 innocent civilians in America, be slaughtered. But of course they want to pretend as though that is just not, that's just no part of the mix here, has nothing to do with the conversation. We need to focus on the good Muslims. Yes, let's talk about the good Muslims. They exist. I've served in the military with some of them. I've served with, with Jews, Muslims, atheists, Christians, all of whom were devoted to this country and all of whom were willing to give their lives. Absolutely wonderful people. I fight with them anywhere, any day of the week, uh, in defense of this country. You may find this surprising if you're a Democrat. Not 100% of Muslims are like that. Not 100% of Jews are perfectly moral people. Not 100% of Christians are great people. Not 100% of Americans are a wonderful, loving, uh, you know, freedom-loving people. You get some good and some bad. The trick is, how do, you, how do you separate the sheep from the goats? With respect to the immigration policy, you have people who want to get in, some of whom are terrorists, and others of whom aren't, out of which there's a small subset of people who will be really wonderful for the country. So you get a lot in the middle who, they're not really hostile to us, they don't particularly care about us, you know, not really any great benefit to having them around in terms of uh, shoring up our country, but no real detriment either. They're just kind of you know, am ambiguous cases. But then you get the ones who would be great to have and ones who would be absolutely catastrophic to have. The one thing that has been shown by the actions of particular Muslims is that um, it's much easier to do more harm than it is to do a great amount of good. And this isn't just proved up by Muslims. It's Criminals prove this day in and day out. It's, it's a lot easier to shoot 20 people than it is to operate and save the lives of 20 people. It's very easy to destroy, very hard to protect, very hard to defend, very hard to build. That takes a lot more effort than, than destruction. <clears throat> and our species is good at doing destruction. So the Democrats want to pretend that it's possible to separate the good from the bad with respect to immigration by this vetting process, which I suppose would go something like this. Yes, uh, ISIS operator, hello. We've got an inquiry for you. Uh, can you check your records and let us know what, you know, about so-and-so? And the ISIS operator says, oh, one moment, let me check. In support of suicide bombing, has murder, does rape. Uh, oh, God, this person is a terrible infidel. We hate them. You should take them off of our hands. Oh, ISIS says these good. Bring them on in. There is no vetting process. The places from which some of these people are coming don't have records, the types of which you can look at. So you can, as, as has been pointed out by the FBI director, you can query your database all day long. If it contains no information, you learn nothing. And that leaves us, that, that leads us directly into confronting the problem that faces us. You have people who want to come here, not all of whom want to do well by us. How do you distinguish the one case from the other case? With respect to immigration, we have we have the ability to do certain things that we could not do inside the United States with respect to our own citizens because it would violate the Constitution. But with respect to people coming here in the first place who aren't cloaked, 
with the protections of our Constitution, we have a freer hand. And once, uh, once they get here, then we have a different story altogether. Then they have certain rights, even if they're not citizens. They have certain access to due process once they've been admitted into the country, rightly or wrongly. Whereas if you keep them out in the first place, you don't have that problem. Now, what Trump needs to do is to stop going off script. He needs to, to write out some, some little talking points and stick to them. <clears throat> and, and really mean it. By, I don't mean just as a rhetorical matter. I mean, and really mean it. You're not going to to ban all Muslims. Not possible, even if you wanted to do it, because mu there are Muslims who are Americans who can't be banned from coming back to, the, you know, from essentially coming home. Oh, we're going to have a ban to keep people from going home. Someone slapped that, that rodent off of his head. Anyway, <clears throat> where you focus your efforts and your concern on parts of the world that have problems, and you leave it there. That's not going to solve all the problems. Some bad people are going to get in. You're just going to have to accept that if you have some way for people to immigrate here, you will have some way for criminals and terrorists to exploit that, and that some Americans will just be killed as a consequence of our not being a police state. You need to own that shit. Freedom carries risks. That does not mean that you pretend the risks don't exist and do nothing to mitigate them like what the Democrats want to do with this pretense that we have some way to vet these people in an effective kind of way. The Democrats, just like the Republicans, need to, to wrestle with this fact. What they should be saying on the Democrat side is the heroism of this man's son, that cashes out all of the civilians who are slaughtered by terrorists. That, that that kind of soldier cannot be found in our own borders so that when you get a Muslim who comes in and, and who is that brave and who does do that in our service, it is such a benefit to us that it no longer matters that these many, ten, that these many thousands of, of Americans were killed. You have to own it on both sides. Neither side wants to confront this. I am I'm fully, uh, I, uh, I'm explicit in this fact. Liberty is dangerous. It, you expose yourself to risks that you could avoid if you became a police state, which would open up other risks, but it would mitigate some risks. It is, uh, it is very good for security. If you have a camera in everyone's house and you can monitor everyone 100% of the time, every day of the week, all day, in everything that they do, you can catch a lot of criminals that way. But you can no longer call yourself a free people. You are then slaves. You might be slaves in a gilded cage, but you're still slaves. Own the consequences of the proposition. Freedom carries the risks, and those lives that are lost because of risks we can't mitigate without usurping our freedoms are well worth being paid to preserve the freedoms. Neither Trump, nor Clinton, nor the Republicans generally, nor Democrats generally, will accept the negative consequences that come along with the policies they propose. They are nakedly dishonest, and it is really annoying. It's two bowls of shit that you have to choose to vote between. Ugh. Have a great day.